Welcome to Sales Tax and More, your go-to resource for all things state tax related. Now here's your host, Michael Fleming. Hey everyone, Mike Fleming here, founder of Sales Tax and More and today's co-host of the Sales Tax and More podcast, where we talk about everybody's favorite topic, which is of course sales tax. And today we're going to go with a Halloween tradition. Every year this time we come out with some of the real life horror stories. And I'll tell you this first one in the very least, it it scared me. I don't care what time of year it was, it would be scaring me. But uh, before we get into it, Let's uh, introduce you to my co-host, Ellie Moffitt. Hey, everyone. Great to be here. This is always a this is always a really good podcast that we put out here, and it's it's very interesting, and it is actually quite scary. I agree with you, Mike. That first story is a doozy. And before we get started on that, I'm just going to do a quick introduction for Sales Tax and More. We are a full-service consulting and solutions firm. We have a really great team here of experienced tax professionals who are very dedicated to fulfilling your state tax and related needs. So we do a lot of sales tax returns, sales tax registrations, consultations, research, audit defense, exemption exemption certificate management, and like our name states, more. So if you have questions about our services, please reach out. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to work with you. And if you enjoy today's podcast, uh, please like and subscribe and follow along. We appreciate your participation. So, Mike, why don't we uh, jump right into story one here? All righty. So um, we had a client come to us and uh, they were in a panic. Um, They had been working with Avalara. Uh, They were on Avalara's small seller program. And why they were registered in Florida, I don't know. What they sold in Florida was not taxable. Um, Avalara was filing $0 returns for them. Um, But uh, uh, they probably shouldn't have been registered, but they were. Um, And then um, Avalara got rid of their small seller program. And, you know, our client, uh, our current client, he wasn't our client then, should have been paying more attention. Um, but they were filing zero dollar returns. They were never asking him for money. So out of sight, out of mind, uh, he didn't do anything when Avalara stopped filing, um, and didn't respond to the States, I guess, because Florida is usually good at reaching out. So there is some culpability on his part here. Um, but you know, what, what happened is the state of Florida doesn't get a bunch of returns, And remember, Avalara was filing $0 returns. So the state of Florida doesn't get these returns. And they say, okay, no one's sending returns. You know, returns should be filed. We're going to estimate. And whenever a state estimates, they usually come up with a number that's higher than the real figure. I say that all the time. In this instance, it, it just proves that point. I don't know how in the world they came up with this number, but... They estimated that he owed $12,000 in back tax. Now, what are they basing that estimate on? He's got a history of filing $0 returns. But the state of Florida, in their infinite wisdom, said he owed $12,000. And not only did they say he owed that money, but that he that uh, they then went out to his bank account and took the money out of his bank account. Um, so... Uh, He called us in a panic, you know, $12,000 out the window. And, you know, he obviously didn't owe this. Um, They froze his bank account uh, in effect, you know, and pulled that money out. He didn't have access to it. Um, So we we get involved at this point. We call the state and say, hey, what he's selling is not taxable. And uh, we... uh, uh, now we've got to wait for the refund and everything. We get this worked out, but here's, you know, insult to injury. He still owed about $2,500 because there's a fee for not filing a return. And if you have zero taxable sales, you're still supposed to be filing a return. So he had enough returns that weren't filed that he had to pay $50 for each one of them, which added up to uh, $2,500. So to me, this just illustrates a number of things. I mean, number one, 
I don't like the states having my uh, banking information. That's one of the services we offer. If we're doing your sales tax returns. You use one of our bank accounts. You send us the money. We pay from our bank account that is set up. We don't commingle the money. It's set up specifically for you. If the state tries to pull money out of it, they're not getting anything because it's it, it's empty until you send your tax money over. Um, so anyway, I digress. Um, but can you imagine a state? Number one, having the audacity to come up with a twelve thousand uh, dollar assessment when you've been filing zero dollar returns or estimated assessment, and number two, actually going out and taking that money out of your bank account. I mean, that is scary as all get out. Um, that just blows my mind. And uh, now he's got to wait uh, to get the the refund of the ten thousand dollars, and he's not even getting all the money back because of this twenty five hundred dollars for the fee for not filing returns. So, um, one of the things we uh, takeaways from this is you can't just stop filing in a state. Um, if you don't believe you have a responsibility to file, you have to deregister. And a deregistration is a formal process in every state. So if he had deregistered, none of this would have happened. If, um, you know, there was better communication between Avalara and this client, uh, this would have never happened. Um, but it did happen. And it's just, you know, it's scary at what the states can do and how sometimes these states don't use any common sense whatsoever. Uh, this one really is chilling to me. I mean, how in the world, um, in good faith, can you go into someone's account and take $12,000 when they've never filed any taxes? They're filing $0 returns all of these years. But anyway, is that a little bit scary to you, Ellie? I mean, yes, it is. And it's unfortunately not the first time we've seen issues pop up with software company. I mean, people know they've listened to our past horror story podcasts. It's it's one of a few issues that can come up working with uh, some of the software companies up there. So, yes, it does scare me. <laughs> yeah. And it, a lot of times it's purely the software company's fault um, and, you know, the, their customer, or our client um doesn't have any culpability i mean it's just an, an error on their part this time um you know uh, this uh this new client of ours uh he could have mitigated uh or or prevented some of this um but i mean i i just you know i'm amazed at what the states can sometimes do so if you think that the state doesn't have the ability to hurt you this uh, should be a, a word of warning to that. Yeah, right, you know, so and also, oh, I was just going to say in a little bit of callback too of, of you know, when it it's really tempting to just hand over an issue like sales tax to another company because it's such a headache. It's so hard to understand. So many issues pop up, but you have to understand where your responsibility lies when you're working with someone and you have to have a base understanding, even though it's hard. And uh, I, I, you know, I think personally, I could see myself getting in this, this guy's shoes too. Just it's, it's complicated. There's a lot going on. If you're a business owner, this is one of many problems you're dealing with. So. Um, yeah. Especially when the salesperson is saying, Hey, just sign up with us. You don't have to worry about anything ever again. We'll take care of everything. Um, if that's the sales pitch and you believe that sales pitch, which uh, we've talked about enough why times you in some cases, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, you, well, really, if you're listening to us, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't believe it. But if you don't have the pleasure like a, of listening to us, yeah, you know, it's it's just a good reminder. If it's if it sounds too good to be true, do do a lot of research and then do a little bit more research and know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, so. know what you're getting yourself into, or work with someone who's going to communicate with you and have a more hands-on approach. Uh, we're not the only company out there that takes a more hands-on approach, but uh, I, I may be a little bit uh, biased, but I believe that we have a better hands-on approach than most of the companies out there. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm I'm not biased at all, right? And I think we're we're fantastic. 
So. I'm gonna I'm gonna revise my statement. We are better than all of the uh, other companies out there when it comes to absolutely. Our There's no bias happening at all right now whatsoever. So um, absolutely. Our, all right, Mike, are you, or do you have more to say about story one or are you ready for story two? No, I, all, all joking aside, though, you, you really need to pay attention to this no matter who you're doing business with. You you just can't set it and forget it. Um, you, you, you've you got to at least have this in the back of your mind um, that you need to be sort of paying attention to it. Yes. All right, Mike. Let's do, let's jump into story two. What you got? All right. Today is pick on Avalara day. So I got another story with Avalara. And this client was not happy with the communication they were getting from Avalara. So they decided to, uh, uh, to come with us. And when we're flipping them over, when we're converting them from the SST accounts to the normal tax accounts, because there's no visibility into the SST accounts at all. Um, we discovered that somehow, and, and this is, you know, we talked about the client having some culpability. Uh, this time he didn't have any culpability. We, we, we discovered that Avalara, somehow they managed to file three different tax types in the state of Michigan um, in, in a six month period. Um, so, I don't know how you do that. Um, but anyway, we're, we're flipping them over to us. And, and now all of a sudden the state is like, well, we want all of these returns. I mean, you've been filing in three different accounts. Um, so six months, we want returns for the last six months period. So um, three companies, three accounts, that's 18 returns. And um they got a nasty letter saying that thousands of dollars were due. And um, all we had to do is uh, uh, go back and amend the other returns to show that, hey, there was just sales tax. These other returns got to be zeroed and close those accounts out. Um, but I don't know how that happens. That's a little bit scary to me. I mean, how in the world can you file three different types of taxes? Um, and that had nothing to do with the client. Uh, somehow that was a lack of internal controls or something going on over there. Um, but we were able to get it all straightened out. You know, of course, uh, you know, our client, when he gets that letter from uh, the state saying he owes, you know, thousands of dollars, uh, he starts to panic. Um, you know, those letters are a little bit nasty. Um, so... Uh, he panics a little bit. He's scared. He's He's got the horror happening at the Halloween time. Um, but uh, it, it worked out well. Um, we we got it corrected. Um, and uh, he's going to be smooth sailing with us uh, on a going forward basis. All right. And uh, should we jump right into story three then? Or how, let's let's go ahead. Well, story three is more of a horror story for us, um, and it really reiterates some of the problems uh, with the streamlined sales tax program. So this person, again, wasn't happy with the communication. That's not a horror story. I mean, that's that's just run of the mill. Um, so they decided that they were moving to us because uh, uh, we communicate better than these software companies. And unfortunately, we've said this multiple times, you have no visibility into the streamlined sales tax accounts. So we know that the returns were filed, but we can't see that they've been filed in any of the online accounts. And when we open up the new accounts, the state's like, well, what about all these months? Well, you know, the state couldn't even see that they had been filed. So we had to go back and jump through a lot of hoops. And uh, by the time this one was done, our operations team, uh, they were ready to clobber the salesperson because uh, the salesperson got them into this. Um, but it just goes to show you how hard it is um, to to have any visibility into these streamlined accounts and to get out of the streamlined program. I'd, you know, as I've mentioned in a number of webinars and podcasts, 
getting out of the streamlined sales tax program, um, our operations department is described as the same as being jumped out of a gang. It's that tough. Um, and this took hours and hours of work um, for something that, that really should not have been an issue. Um, but the states want to know what's going on. And a lot of times the states don't even know what's happening with the streamlined sales tax program. You would think they would know, but when you're talking to some of the people up there, it's like, what's the streamlined sales tax program? And there's not a whole lot of education. It's better than it used to be at the states, um, but it's still not where it needs to be. And this visibility issue is, is absolutely ridiculous in this day and age. How can you not have visibility, you know, on an online basis? So uh, that's a horror story, but it's uh, a, it's a little bit of a different horror story. It's just, uh, you know, our our operations team was horrified at all this extra work that they had to do um, to get something that should have been very simple. And uh, yeah. that's all I got for you today, Ellie. These are the three newest horror stories that I have. And you know what? I think we can leave it at that for everyone. Uh, let them... Let them uh, watch zombies and and goblins from here on out for their spooks. They don't need it. They don't need any more real real horror stories. So, uh, thank you for so much for listening, everyone. If you have any sales tax needs, we offer many solutions and services. And you can reach out to me directly if you have questions about those services. My email is emoffat at salestaxandmore.com. That's e m o f f a t at salestaxandmore.com. Our website is salesaxonmore.com, and we also have a, an entire series of free webinars. We have them pre-recorded, um, and we have a research source that's a that's a paid, wow, a paid source. Hopefully, everyone understands what I'm trying to say here. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, everyone, and we hope to see you on the next episode of the Sales Tax and More podcast. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Be sure to hit subscribe and check out all the resources we have out on the web.